and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. We're so glad to have you tonight. Uh, it's a great day in the Lord, and God is good, and we're excited to have you with us tonight. Um, we're going to um, begin. We, we, did, we did talk about for a couple weeks prayer, and uh, last night had our first um, prayer service, uh, virt first ever pr virtual prayer service. And, um, and so we uh, had 11 people show up last night. Praise the Lord. That's, uh, that's great. And uh, we're excited about that and um, about all those who joined us. And uh, that will be a weekly event. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Um, we, we do want to begin um, on Wednesday night, for, you know, maybe whatever, one, two weeks. I'm not sure how long it will take. Um, but ministering on confession. Now, um, I know in the church world there are different ideas about the term confession. Um, in, in the um, Catholic Church, when we refer to confession, uh, we're talking about, um, you know, confessing your sins, going into confession and confessing to the priest. Um, uh, and then the other, other, other confessions of confessing our sins after we, um, after we have sinned, after we're born again. Um, but there is another type of confession that um, is found in Scripture. And um, the um, principle of confessing the Word of God. Confessing what the Bible says about our life and about um, what we do in life. Hallelujah. And, and speaking the Word. Um, Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof so death and life are in the power of the tongue i remember one time um we were somewhere we we're playing softball that's what it was and um for some reason somebody got hurt and some somebody from the other team who was not a What's the word I'm looking for? It was, a, it was a church league, but they weren't charismatic. Word of faith, they were of a different persuasion. And they were starting to speak all horrible. Things. We said, don't speak that uh, negative stuff over the, our, our player. And uh, they said something, and I said, you know, the death of life and the power of the tongue. They go, that's in God's tongue. Well, no, that's not what it says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue of the individual. It is a principle for us as individuals. Praise the Lord. So, the words of our mouth govern our lives. What we consistently speak sets, um, I like to say it this way sometimes, it's like a thermostat in your house. You set the thermostat to a certain temperature and the uh, the air in that house, based on what's hot or cold, uh, and the, in the, your your furnace or air conditioner, will work. And it will run until it brings the air temperature to what you set the thermostat to. When we speak the word of God, when, or well, the words that we speak, actually, we continue to speak. We believe. We continue to speak. We will. Our lives will come in line. With those things, our lives will come in line with the words we speak. And so Psalm 19, 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's so important that um, e even the psalmist recognize the value of saying that my words are acceptable to God. Now, a lot of times we would say, well, that means you're not cussing, you're not talking ugly. That, that could be something you put in there. But really what he's talking about here is let the words I speak line up with your view, O oh God, with the way you see things. Remember, um, in the book of Isaiah, God says, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, as Isaiah 59, 21 it says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. 
my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. Why did God want to put his words in our mouth? Because the fallen nature of man, man in that fallen state, man was trained, man developed in speaking out of his flesh, out of his circumstances, out of what's going on around him. And he spoke that. He didn't speak what God said about the circumstance. He spoke what his senses told him, what his eyes saw, what his mouth said, what his ears heard, what his nose smelled, what his hands touched. The senses governed his words. And you have heard people say things like this. I won't believe it unless I can see it. Well, that's totally opposite of the Bible principles of faith. If you won't believe it until you see it, then you're not believing it. Because believing is an act of faith. Believing is believing what you cannot see. Hello? Believing is believing, believing what you cannot see. While we look not at the things which are seen, Paul writes to the church at Corneth, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, temporal means, uh, we kind of loosely translate it in modern English as something that's subject to change. It's temporary. It's not, it's not steadfast. It's not permanent. It's subject to change. But the things which are unseen are eternal. Well, we know Jesus said this, sanctify them through thy word, thy word is truth. Amen. And we know that... Um, he says, my words, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. And then he also said that um, the word of God would never pass away. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God would never pass away. So what we have is the one of, and, and then of course the, the um, Old Testament, it says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. God's word is eternal. God's word is unchangeable. God's word cannot change. God says, and God's word, and he, he and his word are one. And so God said, I am the Lord, I change not. The um, New Testament version of that would be uh, Hebrews uh, 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's unchangeable. Glory to God. He does not change. Blessed be God forever. And so we have the words of our mouth govern us. Now, if the words of our mouth govern us, then it would um, be imperative for us to say things that are going to govern us in the right direction, in the right way, according to the purposes of God. Hallelujah. And God says... He made a covenant with us. He puts his words in our mouth. He desires for us to say what he says. Well, that's lying. You know, the, well, what about the Old Testament scripture? Let the weak say, I am strong. Hello? Well, if you're weak, but God says, say you're strong. Are you lying? No. You are speaking words that are a thermostat to bring your life up from weakness to strength. The poor can say, I'm rich. Now, Rich can be such a concept, particularly in modern, you know, whatever, you know, that you're a multimillionaire, you've got 17 yachts, and you've got, you know, six houses, you've got your own private jet. Um, but rich is ample supply, more than enough. Okay? 
uh, you don't have to have a jet to be rich. Um, praise, praise the Lord. I'm glad you know, know that. Amen. Um, glory. So the weak says he's strong. The poor says he's rich. The sick says I'm healed. No more than saying I am strong when you are weak is saying I am healed when you're sick a lie. No, this, it's a biblical principle. You're setting the thermostat of your life to walk in these things. Now, the important thing is, is that we speak from a source of authority or where do you get your words from? Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And then he also said that an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. And a good man out of the good treasure bringeth forth good things. So where are we storing up our treasure? Where are we getting the storage from? Where are we making the deposits into our life? Hallelujah. I know this. If you, if you deposit to, uh, um, $50 in the bank, you can't go withdraw 60 You deposit $100 in the bank, you can go withdraw 60 Amen. If you don't deposit in the bank, you can't withdraw at all. Hello. What are, we, what are we getting into our lives that will come out in abundance? The 11th chapter of Mark, 22nd verse, and, and this is a, this is a continuation of a story um, where G as, as they were um, on the way into the city, Bible says, and as they, uh, Jesus being hungry saw a fig tree afar off and happily came upon it because it had figs on it. If you might fruit find fruit thereon, and there was nothing there. Now, the uniqueness of the fig tree was when they had leaves, it had figs. And so it's, it was out of season, but it had, it had leaves, so it was supposed to have figs, you know. And when Jesus got there, it didn't have any figs. So he said, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And they went in the city, ran the money changers out of the temple, all that stuff came back out. And this is in verse 20, um, oh, in verse 22 or 21. And on the morrow as they passed by, Peter called to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree thou cursed is wither away. In verse 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Now this construct in the Greek um, can be, can be um, actually uh, translated to say, have the faith of God, have faith in God, or the, faith, you know, or the, or the God kind of faith. Some margins will say this. Um, so, but have faith in God or, or have the faith of God. And um, he goes on and says this. For verily, now verily is, you were, for, I'm, I'm quoting King James, verily is a, is a, is a, um, a sworn oath, it's a, a solemn oath, it's a declaration of absolute truth. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Notice it says here that whosoever speaks does not doubt, but believes it will have whatsoever. Whosoever has whatsoever when they don't doubt, when they speak, they speak to the mountain. Hallelujah. What is the mountain you could be talking about? Well, mountain is figurative here. It's not literal. You know, uh, people say, well, can you really go out to Mount Everest and throw in the ocean? No, this is, this is um, symbolic. This is, hallelujah. <laughs> High school friend calling me right in the middle of church. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, amen. <laughs> I'll, I'll call him back later. <laughs> Remember, high school friend, preacher, preacher, hallelujah. Well, I'm going to ask why wasn't he in church when he called. <laughs> um, notice it said that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Again, the mountain is figurative. 
You've got to understand there's, there's figurative language in the Bible. All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Trees aren't literally clapping their hands. It's a figurative speech that creation is rejoicing. Okay? So, whosoever shall say unto the mountain. The mountain represents figuratively insurmountable or uh, uh, what appears to be insurmountable obstacles in your life. Okay? So in that symbolism and figure, uh, figurative speech, that's what it means. So, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Glory to God. And then he goes on verse 24. Uh, and says, I mean, um, says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Notice that you believe you have it before you get it. You believe you have it before you get it. You take it by faith. So the principle here is that you speak. You believe what you speak and you get the answer. You receive the answer. So you can speak to that. Well, what is the mountain that you're facing? Are you facing financial? Are you facing physical? Are you facing emotional? Are you facing um, all kinds of circumstances in life that have become mountains? You've got to speak to the mountain. You've got to speak to it. Now, <clears throat> Brother Hagin used to say, always find scripture that supports what you're praying for. Well, why is that? Because faith begins where the will of God is known. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith begins where the will of God is known. And we know his will by his word. When we see the word of God, when we meditate in the word of God, his will is revealed to us. And the Bible says faith accompanies. Um, one translation says faith accompanies the word. <clears throat> Amen. Faith comes by hearing the word. Faith accompanies hearing the word. The word brings faith. The word brings faith. Glory to God. Can somebody say hallelujah? Amen. And so. When we look into the Bible, so here's, here's why it's so important to get information um, in the right place. Because if we don't get the right information and don't feed on the right information, we will make deposits that we can't withdraw from to deal with the issues of life. Psalmist said, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Out of your heart are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Meaning what? Guard what goes in. There's an old computer um, acronym that we used to use. You, you might still hear it today, but we, it used to be used... Back in the day, uh, early years of um, the 60s, 70s, and so forth, uh, programming, you used it all the time. G-I-G-O. Garbage in, garbage out. You cannot put garbage in and get sweet smelling out or perfect out. Hello? You use dog food as your cake batter, you are not going to get a good cake. I'm just telling you, uh, you use rotten meat, you're not going to have good food. 
garbage in, garbage out. You put, remember, remember Jesus said, an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart. What we put in is the treasure we're storing up. Hello. So, Joshua 1 8. Now, Moses is dead. Joshua's taking over. Praise the Lord. And these are the words spoken to Joshua. This book of the law. Now, understand at this time, what they had was they had the five books of Moses. And they had um, Job. Chronologically, Job is the oldest book. So, but we, we had the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, Leviticus. We had those five books. Uh, referred, and it, was, it was called the law. But it was the word of God. Okay? So, in... In speaking of principle, the Old Testament principle was to take the Word of God, okay? This, this book of all, the Word of God. So we can say in New Testament terminology, now that we have the whole canon of all Scripture, we can come back and say, the, the, the Word of God shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to, to all that's written therein. For then, notice what? For then, what do you mean then? After you have not let the word out of your mouth, after you have meditated and observed to do according to what's written therein, or all that's written therein, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So now we know that meditating and observing the word produces good. Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. So what? The word of God is good. The word of God is that <clears throat> good treasure that flows out of our mouth. Hallelujah. The word of God is that thing that flows out of our mouth. Out of, because it comes up out of our heart. We bring it up. The word meditate actually literally in the Hebrew meant to mutter. To mutter. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt mutter. He wasn't talking about getting, you know, in, in some weird position and going, oh, ah, ooh. that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about rehearsing verbally. The word of God. Rehearsing verbally the word of God to mutter. We've all muttered. You know, hit your, you know, take a hammer and miss the nail and hit your thumbnail. You'll mutter. You'll talk to yourself. Muttering is talking to yourself. You, you know, people say, What are you talking about? And you said nothing. Or some people actually got down there. I'm just talking to myself. You're muttering. And the Bible teaches us that we're to speak the word of God to ourselves. To what end? To what purpose? That we are able to observe to do according to all that's written therein. Hallelujah. You see, you set your, remember the first thing we said was that the words of our mouth govern our life as we mutter the word, as we meditate the word, as we don't let it depart out of our mouth. We're constantly speaking the word of God and we don't let it depart out of our mouth, we set our life on course with what the Word says. And, and um, the writer here says that if you do that, that that course you were on will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Uh, the literal Hebrew for that last phrase is deal wisely in the affairs of life. You will deal wisely in the affairs of life. Praise the Lord. And so it's important that we keep the word of God in us and speak the word of God. If the word of God is a good thing, 
then speaking out of your senses is the bad thing. Now remember, or speaking out of carnal things, Romans says that the carnal mind is enmity opposed to, resistant to, the Spirit of God. It is enmity against the things of God. For it is not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be. The unrenewed, the carnal mind will say what it sees, what it feels, what it hears, what it tastes, what it touches. It will say what circumstances say. But the Bible says to say what God says. And as we said earlier, we, we told you, you know, the, he, said in the, he said that the weak say I am strong. Well, if you're weak and you're saying you're strong, it can't be a lie to do that. Hello? Well, I just call it like it is. I'm weak. I'm going to say I'm weak. Well, that's not the Bible. The Bible says change your circumstance by setting the thermostat of your life with your words to strength. Hello? <clears throat> you know, I got the dual thermostat. You know, that's got the temperature on one side and the temperature you want it to be on the other. And, um, you know, you come in here and for some reason, um, usually uh, my wife or my second daughter, the middle child, get hot. And you'll come down here and they'll have it on 65 degrees and it's, tw it's two degrees outside. And they're hot. And I'm coming down here breathing smoke out. Because, you know, not, not from heat, but my breath is condensing in the cold air. And uh, I look up there, and it's on 65. And I'm like, Jesus, what is wrong with these people? You know? I mean, do they need Geritol or something? And um, so I'll go over to the thermostat, and I'll push the temperature I want the room to be up. If they let me have my way, I'll go to 72, but we usually keep it about 67, 68. Um, that's the compromise because, you know, they can't take it above that. And the heat will come on and the air will start warming. Hello. Well, and, and it'll eventually get to 67, 68 degrees, whatever I got it set on, and it'll cut off. And it'll keep coming on and go off, keeping it there. Think of it this way. The temperature of your life says weak. But the, what you want it to is strong. And so you push the button of meditating in the word on strength. Meditating on the word of being strong. And you push that up there and say strength is what I want my, my life to be. I want the course of my life to be in strength. And you keep, and so you speak. The, the, the furnace is the words of your mouth. The furnace is the words of your mouth. And you begin to speak strength based on what the word says. Your life will rise to that. Now, this principle will work also with healing. It'll, it'll take you up, to, it'll take you into health. Now, let me say this you can't just um, accept a negative report just because somebody says, you, know, you have to die. You know, you're going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, he's a doctor. Yeah, but he's practicing medicine. Jesus is the great physician. He don't practice medicine. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he's the healer. Glory to God. I said glory to God. There is no circumstance too big for God. But our cooperation is necessary and we do that by speaking the word of God, by taking hold of the word of God, by declaring the word of God, and going back to Mark, what things soever we desire when we pray, believe that we receive them and we shall have them. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, if cancer is your mountain, then speak to the mountain. Speak the word of God. Say, 
be removed. Say, I am the healed of the Lord according. And you've got to have scriptures now, folks. There, and, and there's plenty of ways to get these scriptures. Uh, right now, I could probably give you about six right off the top of my head that I know that relate to health and healing um, that, will, that will, those alone will get you healed. If you believe them, speak them, act on them, walk in the light of them, set the course of your life to health. Hallelujah. I mean, um, here's one scripture you can have. With long life will I satisfy thee and show me, show thee my salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Glory to God. Well, everybody's going to die sometime. Well, yeah, but you can change that. No, you can't. Yes, you can. The Apostle Paul stated in one place, he was ready to be offered up. He was ready to die. And then he goes and says this, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. It was more needful for you to stay, so I'm going to stay. He changed, he, he, he's the one that made that decision. He's the one that decided to stay. Hallelujah. Then later on he said, well, I've finished my course. I'm done. I'm leaving. Hallelujah. So there is, there is power in what we say. Deuteronomy 6. Can I get an amen out there? I don't know who's... Uh, uh, I see some folks out there. Hallelujah. Um, Deuteronomy 6, 6. And these words which I commanded this day shall be in thy heart. So this, this, is, the, this is the thing. You've got to get out of your head and get it in your heart. You've got to get in your spirit. Why? Because faith is spiritual. It's not of your head. It's not just a, well, I agree with that. No, it's a belief. It is, it is absolute truth to you. Glory to God. And thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children and shall talk with them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them upon, for a sign upon thine hand and thou shalt be as uh, frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things which thou uh, filledest not, and wells digged that thou diggedest not. Don't y'all just love the King Jimmy? Hallelujah. N nor, vineyards, or, uh, nor vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, um, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then be, uh, beware, lest thou forget the Lord that brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt and the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Glory to God. We are to, you know, that word is to stay before us. And as we feed on the word, which again, we're setting that thermostat of our life. The more you speak it, the more you reinforce it. Hello? Now, if I came down here in the morning, it was cold. It was 65 down here, and I moved up to 68, got to 68, and I went right back over and pushed it back down to 65. Guess what's going to happen? It will drop right back down. We have to continually speak and continually stay in that vein of saying where we want our life. We have to keep it set there. We have to be consistent with it. It's not just a um, in and out. It's not a quick thing. It's not a little dabble, do you? You know, like, like um, uh, Brill Cream, a little dabble, do you? Now, that's old. Some of you have, probably have no idea what Brill Cream is. Just be blessed that you don't. Hallelujah. It was a, it was a hair thing guys put on back in the, back in the day. kind of helped kept men's hair neat. Um, but it was kind of greasy or, you know, not quite the greaser look, but it, you know, little dab will do you. Hold your hair in place all day. Hallelujah. Now, it wasn't for the construction guy. He didn't care. He had the hard hat on. He was out working hard. It was for you know, people who were trying to be cool and sophisticated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Keeping, you know, so, but this real quick, you know, we, we, get, we can do this and quit. If you quit, you're going to go right back. You'll go right back. Hallelujah. There's an old sermon that Jerry Savelle preached. Um, 
and in, it's called the, people can't begin to call it the canoe sermon. And, um, you know, paddling up river. See, the world is contrary to us. It's contrary to Christianity. It's contrary to the faith. It's contrary to everything that, that we live and stand for. So it's like paddling up river. Hello? If you're, in, if you're in a canoe and you're paddling up river, guess what happens if you stop paddling? The current will turn you around and take you back down river. It just happens that way. Um, you got to keep paddling, keep paddling, keep paddling. Hallelujah. You got to keep... You got to keep speaking. You got to keep speaking. You got to keep speaking. Hallelujah. And there are going to be times that you are speaking the word um, in our circles, what we call the word of faith circles. Um, and we're not a denomination, but, you know, it, it, we get, we, the Christianity kind of gets divided up in the, in, in the, you know, camps of belief or what they major on and that kind of thing. Word of faith. Uh, which really came out of what we refer to as the teaching revival of the um, uh, 70s, early 80s, on the, heel, uh, on the heels of the charismatic renewal, um, which came on the heels of the latter rain, which came on the heels of the healing revival, <laughs> which came out of the, uh, kind of out of the end of uh, the Azusa Street early Pentecost of the uh, last century. Bunch of revivals, hallelujah, bunch of, bunch of emphasis, em emphasis on certain things by the Spirit in the church to restore them as a norm in the church. Um, oh, I was going to say something about that before I went off on the deep end there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're, and so in the Word of Faith circles, um, we would, um, and I thought about this earlier tonight, and I was, I was going to say it here, and I'm, I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to get the right, frame around what I'm, I'm, I'm going to say. Well, confession. Now, we got, we got so caught up with the term confession. Um, we were confessing, and I've been kind of doing it here as we're teaching, um, but I'm going, to make, I'm going to make a clarification at this point. If you are rehearsing, met, muttering, meditating the Word of God, and you don't believe what you're saying, in other words, your head's going, man, or your heart's, your heart's like, man, that's just too good to be true. Then you are not making a confession of faith. You are meditating unto faith. And there's a difference. If, you are, if you're confessing or muttering and don't believe, keep doing it. Keep going because you're confessing unto faith. You're bringing yourself into faith. You're schooling yourself in faith with the Word of God. Now, once you believe it, hallelujah, as Paul wrote uh, to uh, the Corinthians again, he said, um, as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also, we then have the same spirit of faith. As it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith is you believe and speak it. If you don't believe it, in other words, you're sitting here tonight, you're sick, you got, you got a disease, you got, you've been given a death sentence, you got cancer, something um, that <clears throat> would just <clears throat> absolutely, you, you go, uh, what do I do? I mean, doctors have done all they can do. There's no answers. There is an answer. And you hear me say, you know, 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, you were healed. If you were healed, then you are healed. I just can't believe. I just can't believe that I'm healed. Uh, it's just, it's just too. That just sounds like a, a, a far-fetched thing to speak what God's word says. You got to school yourself into faith. You got to start speaking the word. You got to take the scriptures and mutter them. Now, here's a beautiful thing: if you will give yourself to mutter, meditating the word. The great and mighty Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will send to you another paraclete. And one of the definitions of that, so one, of the, one of the seven definitions of the term paraclete, we, King James translates it uh, exclusively comforter, but also means helper, strengthener, standby. 
It also means teacher. There is a teacher in the church called the Holy Ghost. I said, there's a teacher in the church called the Holy Ghost. And as you speak the word of God, as you meditate the word of God, you continue to feed on that word, the Holy Spirit will work with you and he will teach you. Amen. The psalmist said, the entrance of thy words giveth light. They give understanding to the simple. Glory to God. So as the light comes, now we can we really relate light to revelation, which produces faith. Produces faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, glory to God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. A little play on the Greek there of a continual, you know, ongoing hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. <clears throat> the word of God. You may say, I don't believe it right now. That's okay. But don't give up. Because because Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When we go to the Bible and we... And you look in there and you're, like I said, you're, you're dying. You're, you're, you've been told you're going to have to die of cancer. <clears throat> and you look in the Bible and it says, by his stripes you were healed. It says, he healeth all thy diseases, forgives all your iniquities, and heals all your diseases. Hello. Back in the 100th Psalm. I said 100th, probably 103rd or 104th. I do that. And then my brain goes cramp. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hundred, um, hundred and third Psalm. He says, he bless the Lord. O my soul, all that's within me, bless his holy name and forget not all of his benefits who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. See, when you see that in the word of God, a glimmer of hope may arise. Faith gives substance to hope. Now, faith is the evidence. Literally, the title deed, the guarantee of things hoped for. So, as you see, is that hope? <coughs> and it may be a faint flicker. Your situation may be dire. And the hope of God being healed through the power of God's word may be a faint little flicker. Hold on to that. And add to that. Add fuel to it by meditating the word. Getting more scriptures. There are books that, you know, you write us, we can get them, we can uh, tell you how to get them. Um, or, or, or text us or whatever. We can tell you how to get a hold of them. Um, with just healing scriptures in it, you know. Um, I've got I've got a list of scriptures in a file. We can send that to you if you want it. Um, I don't know, you know, enough enough to heal you. Hallelujah. And um, but you meditate on that. What happens when you meditate? Well, the entrance of the word gives light. The teacher's there. The Holy Spirit is there to unveil that to you for light and in that light faith arises glory to God and to the point that as you mutter it and say it and mutter it and say it and continue to feed and to rehearse it before yourself that you come from the place of I don't believe it to I believed it and to the place and keep going keep going and Abraham being fully persuaded that what he promised, he was able also to perform. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. What happens then when you speak? You go, then when you begin to speak, you're not speaking um, unto faith. You're speaking out of faith. The Spirit 
of faith. As it is written, I mean, we then having the same spirit of faith. As it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I trust that you've been blessed by this. It's, um, I think it's time to wrap it up, getting close here. Um, we want you to know that, and we'll pick up next week. We'll continue on with this. There's some things we're going to cover um, next week. I was off my notes so far. I don't even really know how to hook back into where I was. Um, but that's, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Um, I trust you will, you will take to heart the importance of meditating the word, speaking the word, musing the word until you just are absolutely convinced it's true. And then you can begin to speak and speak and speak out of faith. Not to get faith, you're speaking because of faith. And set that thermostat of your life to the answer. <clears throat> Speaking to the mountain and casting it into the sea. And living life the way that God intended. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou, sh for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then. Thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Praise God. Well, it's time to receive our midweek offering. Uh, we do this electronically. Praise God. So if you have a, um, uh, an offering and it's time to give you, through PayPal or Square Cash or, or the, the Cash app, uh, that information should be coming up on your screen. And uh, you can... Um, give that way. We're going to pray over the offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Jesus said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Men will give unto your bosom. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for all those that are giving right now electronically. And we thank you, Father God, that the heavens, uh, windows, heavens, windows of heaven are opened unto them. And you pour out them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. Thank you for the word delights on land and lend to many and don't borrow. And we thank you that you, as, you establish your covenant in the earth by giving wealth into the hands of your people so we can preach the gospel around the world. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I want to leave you with this final scripture tonight from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.